Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the fifth virtual Williamsburg Economic Development Authority Business Roundtable. We're pleased to be able to offer this service to our local business leaders, and we're glad you chose to join us today. This is the first day of school, and we're grateful to teachers and parents who are venturing into uncharted territory, and we hope that goes well for everyone. We're anticipating over 30 people who've registered for the call. You should be able to log in and see the presentation, but you can also call in. We should uh, be about 30 to 40 minutes as we want to make an efficient use of your time. My name is Rick Overy, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Economic Development Authority and a local business owner. And today we want to focus or continue to focus on the resources that are available to local businesses. We recognize that this is a very difficult time for our business community and our EDA team has made an important effort to help businesses to navigate the myriad resources that are available at the national, state, and local level. One such effort is a partnership with the College of William and Mary Business School. We're fortunate to have an excellent business school in the city and the students have been able to contribute their energy and expertise over many years. In the spring, a new effort was launched in response to COVID called the Crimdell Small Business Network. It was founded by students specifically to help small businesses. Joining us today are two MBA students, Kara Simpson and Vicki Harrington, who founded the Crimdale business, Small Business Network because they're committed to making a difference locally even while they're pursuing their graduate degrees. They'll make a presentation followed by some questions. At the conclusion of the program, our City Economic Development Director, Michelle DeWitt, will close by highlighting some of the other resources that are available through the city. Kara Simpson was born and raised in Fredericksburg. She received her uh, bachelor's degree at St. Mary's in biology and mathematics and her master's of science from the University of Maryland in marine science. She served for two and a half years in the US Peace Corps in the Philippines where she implemented a number of USAID funded projects on sustainable economic development and environmental education. Although Kara is passionate about supporting local businesses, she's also an avid world traveler. She's visited 24 countries across six continents. Kara now lives in Waynesburg, where she's in her second year of the MBA program. Vicki Harrington went to American University for her bachelor's, where she double majored in psychology and religious studies. After undergrad, she worked as a client manager, a client services manager, and then a field manager at the Washington Post, where she focused on digital advertising and marketing campaigns for local DMV clients. Originally from Lexington, Kentucky, uh, Vicki enjoys exploring the national parks, and she's also a second year student getting her MBA in business analytics. Thank you both for bringing your expertise around the world and around the country to Williamsburg and to help our business community while you're here. We look forward to hearing your ideas. Thank you so much for that introduction, Rick. Yeah. Give us one moment while we share our screen and get started. Mm -hmm. While Vicky's getting the slide up, I feel like I need to acknowledge that we're, we are very close, but with the amount of work we've been doing together, I think we are unofficially family at this point. In our, so we are in each other's quarantine bubbles, for better or for worse. So I'd actually like to get started today with a quote from one of my personal heroes, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, and that is that when you think that you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. And hopefully this rings true for many of you listening today, but it especially rings true for us at the Crimdell Small Business Network. We began this, this project last year uh, while we were planning as the co-first co year representatives of the Net Impact Club at the William & Mary School of Business, an event to bring small businesses to campus. This was meant to be set at the end of March, and of course this was canceled. And so it was the end of something we put a lot of time and a lot of effort into, but it provided us our first look at the small business community in Williamsburg, and actually our first big exposure to, to you, to the small businesses, to the local government officials involved in this, these types of projects was the first business roundtable that we attended back in December. So we're really excited to be here, gone from participants now to speakers, and talk to you about the Crimdell Small Business Network. So what this has, uh, <laughs> thank you. So again, what, what, started, what started as the end of the event now is something that we are really excited to continue on in our last year as William & Mary MBA students, but we're also working to pass on into the incoming class and keep it going long beyond our graduation. 
So today, the Crimdell Small Business Network, we are here to talk to you about not just empowering small businesses, but also business students and getting them involved in the community. So emphasizing that this is really a two-way relationship, and that has a lot to do with our namesake. Hopefully, many of you recognize the bridge on the background of this slide. This is the Crimdell Bridge, and it's one of the most iconic locations on the William & Mary campus. So just like a bridge, again, we are looking to be that additional connector in the community between, again, the business students and the local businesses. Now, Rick already did a great job of introducing us, so I just wanted to say hello, give you a little bit, a little bit of background. Vicki's from Kentucky. I'm from Virginia, just an hour and a half up the road on 95. But most importantly, over the past year, we've been living in Williamsburg, getting to know this community better, and uh, learning a lot from the people we've talked to along the way. So. Moving into what we are here to talk about is first, we just want to tell everyone a little bit more about the Crimdell, Crimdell Small Business Network, Crimdell SBN for short, give you some background on what we're doing, specifically what, what services we're offering local businesses right now, and also update everyone that's been involved along the way with our, with our numbers, with some results, and share some of our lessons that we've learned through this process. Now, as I mentioned, this really began with COVID-19. It began with business students with William & Mary looking at the community, looking at the situation in front of them and asking themselves, how can they be of service? How can we help our local community? We saw an opportunity as many business students, they lost access to internships, to jobs, and all of a sudden they had a lot of unexpected time on their hands and they were looking for ways to implement the skills and the lessons from our business school curriculum. Many of our students have backgrounds in business before, some are business owners, some as were, have worked as consultants. So they're a really talented pool of people from a really broad group, broad background, international and domestic students alike. So we saw that with all of the skills and what they were able to give, there's of course a need in the community with small businesses and medium and large scale businesses alike that this is really a situation that no one was prepared for. And coming together, thinking about creative solutions and just doing the best we could to help facilitate the sharing of resources and providing any, any sort of help we could was the goal. However, once we got going, we saw that we were meeting a need that's bigger than COVID. We see that we're growing into an organization, the Crimdell Small Business Network, that we plan to keep going well beyond recovery. We want to continue to partner with small business owners in the greater Williamsburg area to help empower them with guidance, collaboration, and the right tool set. We offer the experience and expertise of students, faculty, and associate, associates from Raymond A. Mason School of Business at William & Mary preparing small business owners for sustainable growth. By connecting local businesses with the business school, we are striving to support long-term relationship between William & Mary and the surrounding community. But most importantly, at Crimdell Small Business Network, our goal is to work with you. And of course, none of this would be possible without the help of an extensive network, because of course it takes a village to accomplish anything, anything of great, great value. So, First off, as representatives from William & Mary, we are partnering, partnering with professors, faculty, and executive partners who have been giving us amazing advice and insights along the way. We have been working with the Entrepreneurship Center, also part of William & Mary, and the Launchpad, which is an involvement in the small business community already. Next, we've also, of course, been working closely with the Economic Development Councils of Williamsburg, James City County, and York County, as well as the Greater Williamsburg Chamber and Tourism Alliance and the Greater Williamsburg Partnership. Now our closest partner in this has turned out to be an organization that we've gotten to know really well through the executive director, James Carroll at the Hampton Roads Virginia SBDC and their founding organization, the, the US Small Business Administration. And then the list goes on. There are more people, there are more experts that we've spoken with, that we have learned from, but just to give you a little bit of a peek of all of the people coming together that make the Crimdell Small Business Network possible. Now, all of that is just some background on our organization, some future direction, but really what I'm sure a lot of you would like to know is what we can do for you right now. And currently, Crimdell Small Business Network is offering two main services. 
The first is 10 hours of free counseling through this Hampton Roads uh, Small Business Development Center partnership, which we work with, uh, with business clients on anything from operations, marketing, finance, leadership, strategy, whatever it is that they come to us that they want to talk to students about. Additionally, we've seen a big need, especially during COVID, where we're losing these person, per, person in-person, face-to-face interactions. More and more small business owners have communicated a desire for more networking events and the ability to talk to each other. So we've been hosting bi-monthly bi networking events called Crimdell Conversations, where businesses, business owners, as well as William & Mary students and William & Mary members of the William & Mary community can connect and talk over their real-time business concerns. So next, to get into more details, I'm gonna pass it over to Vicki. <laughs> Hi guys, don't you love our technical uh, <laughs> capabilities, switching, switching sides here. As Kara mentioned, we've got these two fantastic opportunities right now that we'd love to tell you a little bit more about. The first being our partnership with SBDC. So how, how can you get involved in our process? What does that look like? So we have a group of currently 15 uh, student business analysts. They're either upper undergrads or MBA students who work on teams of two to follow this four-step process. So first, like Kara mentioned, the, pro the project focus is entirely around what you're comfortable with and what you think your business needs. And so they'll meet with you to talk through that, whether it's finance or social media or online presence, whatever it may be. Then the students go off and conduct their own independent research. They learn more about your industry. They consult uh, experts at William & Mary. They talk to one another and just try and get a better handle on, on what the project will be. Once they know that, they actually take their findings to the Hampton Road Small Business Development Center um, expert counselors to get to seek approval and input. And those of you that have worked with SBDC and those of you that haven't, um, they're, all of their counseling is totally free of cost, free of judgment, and confidential. So we at Crimdell also abide by that. Once everything is approved through SBDC and given the sign off, the students will take and deliver actionable recommendations to you. And when we say actionable recommendations, we mean they don't just tell you, hey, maybe this you know, service is what you should use. They say, this is why you should use it, this is why it'll cost what it does, and let me help you set it up. So it's, it's really a huge part of it is that implementation and making sure that what we're recommending, you can actually use. And just so you're aware, uh, the process, you know, um, takes around, it's, it's a short process, takes about two and a half weeks. Um, we ask the businesses to probably devote two hours a week to it. So it's not as much of a, you know, commitment on your side as it is to the students, but that's generally the turnaround. So what, what does a project look like? What does a project scope and recommendation look like? Um, some of the examples include helping organizational um, develop, organizing your business, organizational tools. So this is a picture of Trello. Trello is a software that you can use to help plan your projects, next steps. This is actually one that a student had helped a business set up so that they can manage their project management and workflow. And again, they research the, the tools themselves and then they help you set it up. So when we say deliverable recommendations, it's things that you can implement immediately. Uh, finance has been such a huge, huge part of Crimdell's uh, business analyst's job and something that we know is very sensitive but can be just huge to get a better hold of. So we've been doing cash flow forecasts to see you know, minimum revenue that a company needs to, to get through COVID. Um, a huge thing we've been helping businesses do is calculating loan repayments. We know that um, a lot of businesses receive PPP or IDLE and, you know, fitting not only the capital of receiving that loan, but fitting in the payments too once they start to occur. We've also helped with project costs, figuring out, um, figuring out if you want to start a new business, what does that look like? What capital do you need to raise? And another uh, really big area that we focused on is social media management and online presence. So um, we help you develop a comprehensive strategy, uh, get you organized on your social networks, and really just take the core of what your business is and try and figure out, well, where should we focus? 
You know, if we're a retail business, does it make sense? Do we need LinkedIn? Do we need Alignable? Figuring out what your strategy actually looks like. And an example here is a calendar that um, some a student made to help explain their presence on the web. And then a before and after of what a social media account that has a more personal feel to it, you know, it doesn't feel like a business account. And then one that has that extra oomph that looks like it's a business account. And so figuring out how to take your business there. So those are some great examples of some of the counseling projects we've done and what we'd love to help you all with. Uh, something else we're very proud of is our Crimdell conversations. Um, something we noticed in the beginning was that there, while there's plenty of webinars, um, all, everyone just jumped into Zoom. Um, it was really hard to find interactive Zoom sessions, and that was something that we wanted to do. So we've got these educational and engaging networking events specifically for greater Williamsburg area business owners. On the calls, there's business owners, um, people that work at, you don't have to be the owner, you can also just be out of business, um, industry experts, William & Mary business students, William & Mary executive partners, and um, usually they're, they're around a topic that either a faculty member will give a five to 10 minute conversation on, um, and then we break out into rooms and we talk. So it's, it's forming those connections. I think one of my favorite moments at Crimdell was two business owners um, sharing how they, they manage their marketing campaign. And they, they brought in a third local business of saying, hey, you need to go to them. Like they're, they helped me, they can help you. So just finding ways to communicate when in-person connection can be so hard. And of course, we have to plug, we have two coming up that we're really excited about. Um, so the first one on September 17th is with William & Mary alumni Delia Folk. She runs a very successful um, online consulting business and a lifestyle blog. And she wants to talk about taking your core um, business strategy and growing it into a successful online business. And then we also have, and that's September 17th, we also have distinguished Professor Inga, Inga Carboni um, on September 24th. She wrote uh, Connecting the Dots. It's a book about how to network effectively and efficiently. And she will be discussing inclusivity in an online workplace. So we'll have links uh, in case you guys are interested, but really it's tr we're trying to develop a space where um, students at the business school experts at the business school and business owners can get together and, and talk and share insights on both sides. I know our students have learned so much valuable experience and insight through this and are just hungry to, to talk to business owners and, and learn more. So what, what have we done, <laughs> right? What have we done since, since June? Um, we're really proud of these numbers and we only want them to grow. Like we are trying to form a long-term community and relationship. So to date, since June, we've uh, helped over 40 business projects. We've had over 30 um, William & Mary business students engaged and that's mainly MBA students, but we do have some rock star undergrads that help us too. Um, we've helped businesses in nine counties, but we do specifically focus on Williamsburg, James City County, York, and Gloucester, because Gloucester has a VIMS connection with William & Mary. Um, something we're super proud of is that 70% of our businesses have been minority owned. So uh, whether it's a female, veteran, or person of color, um, we, we've been trying to find and reach out to groups that need our support the most. 24 industries. and. Um, through our projects, we have helped retain 120 employees. So that, that's kind of the, the breadth of, of the types of companies we've worked with and for. This is a laundry list. I know my communications professor would tell me I was breaking all the rules by having so much text on a PowerPoint slide, but um, this is to say that in helping out businesses, Crimdell has kind of formed into a business of itself, and we've picked up so many valuable lessons along the way through our uh, mentors, through our connections with the community, through learning from businesses. So I just wanted to share a few. I think the biggest hole we noticed was understanding the resources available. Um, and it's incredible how many there are, whether it's you know um, forgivable grants, whether it's 
free counseling. Um, there's a lot of things provided to the Williamsburg area businesses, and we're still trying to figure out how to best get that information out to businesses. Um, advice we got from the very beginning, I believe it was from Jim Carroll, um, is mature businesses can become new and new businesses can become mature. So the idea that, especially in a time as, as tumultuous as, as COVID, you know, even the most mature of business can, can pivot, can learn a new strategy, can become nimble, adapt. And those new businesses can also learn how to gain structure, fill out organization, and, and become a more mature fixture. And then most importantly, no one saw this coming. Um, a business failing by no means the person failed. This, is, this has been a tough time for all, and I think it's important that we, we recognize that we're all in this together and that um, just shockingly and lucky, luckily, like um, everyone we've talked to has been so interested in wanting to dive in and help. With that being said, and we'll send this link out as well, um, please follow us on social media. We are, we're on Facebook, Alignable, LinkedIn, YouTube. We've got our videos if you want to see some past crisis or criminal conversations. And really quickly, I'd like to show you, we have our URL right there, crimdellsbn.com. And I know, oh, I actually don't have too many tabs. Sometimes I have too many tabs open. But um, this is our website. You can, it tells you a little bit more about how the counseling works, how to click up to sign up. And then also our, on our events tab is where you can sign up for our next events on the 17th and 24th. And with that, we'd love to start, we'll take some Q and A's. Um, the first one I'd like to throw out myself actually, um, something that I mentioned us struggling with is, is how to connect to businesses. So we'd, we'd love to kind of open up the conversation around how best to, where do we find businesses? Where, where, what is the best online um, community to find businesses? Well, thank you so much for your vision and insights, Karen and Vicki, um, and also for the impact that you've already had just since March. I think that's incredible. Um, so at this time, if there's audience questions or even a uh, response uh, to the question that our panelists have asked, uh, just raise your hand and Michelle will unmute you. Michelle, do we have any questions or response? Not yet, Rick. Uh, one question I wanted to ask is how can we help you in your mission? Uh, perhaps liking you on Facebook, um, there is reference on the website to giving. You've mentioned referring small business owners. How can we help you uh, to reach businesses and to be successful? Yeah, that's, that's such a great question. Thank you, Rick. Um, like we said, something that we have been, that we really want to see happen is this long-term relationship. We were already recruiting um, first year MBA students to kind of take over for us once we leave. And I think we, we recognize that there has been, you know, this disconnect with, especially with MBA students because it is only a two year program. And so I think truly just helping us build the community, whether it's knowing a business that you think that could help benefit our services, to attending our Crimdel conversations, to just emailing us. We can we can provide a, our email to everyone too. Um, this, yeah, yeah, the service done to students is, is huge. Yeah, and I would add too that, that one of our, our greatest core values at Crimdel SBN is our ability to respond quickly to feedback. So feedback is so, so vital. We, you know, we, we love hearing ideas from other people of, looking at ways that we can improve after our crisis or our excuse me our crimdel conversations <laughs> we uh, we send out surveys we ask for ways that people you know could see that we could improve events so if you have any ideas for ways that we could better help um please any, don't be shy any partnerships we're so yeah. open to what crimdel looks like um and we're just trying to find better ways to connect with the community great thank you michelle do we have any other questions We do. Uh, oh. But now I can't tell who it was. Joanna, <laughs> can you tell? We did have someone, but it looks like they lowered their hand. Okay. So. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, on the uh, website, you focus on four areas, and I think these are critical for our businesses to know the areas of expertise that you all have with, with students and the faculty there. 
uh, operations, finance, uh, marketing. You mentioned specifically the social um, marketing, which I think many of us are still struggling to try and uh, get, and then also leadership. So uh, yeah, here you've got it in front of us. I yeah, think. I would say a lot of the projects we've helped work on have been either um, researching and finding out how to better increase online presence. So whether that's which, um, you know, um, website company to employ or continue employing, whether that's finding um, re alternative revenue streams for, for um, new endeavors and pivoting um competitive intelligence mm -hmm. yeah exactly and the more projects we do the the more we develop our tool set because something that that we're really working on is making sure that after a student works with a business on some type of a project that they bring that newly found research knowledge back to our organization and make it easier and faster and more efficient for students to carry out that process for a different business owner so something that I'm excited to get moving that's not quite quite ready is we want to be able to be provide more specific menu items essentially that would guide the business more easily in uh, you know getting getting services turned around quickly. But uh, like I said, business owners themselves are are guiding the way we do things. So it's crazy when when Vicky and I work together on this. It's like. We would not have, we could not have imagined how much we would have grown as an organization just since June. So it's hard to say what we'll look like in another four or five months, what services we'll be offering. Um, so any feedback, any support. Any other questions, Michelle? We do. Um, so we'll start with TS. TS, you should be able to speak now. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, great. Every time um, I, I wanted to ask a question, you, you guys would answer it with more comments. So that was my hand raising the Lord. Um, okay. So <laughs> I just wanted to add in that um, I'm, I'm not out, I'm not in the, the, the Williamsburg area at the time. I worked out there for a part, um, part of my time where I got connected. Uh, with the EDA and just different opportunities that was offered. And um, I just wanted to know, would this program support me that I'm, you know, being that I'm outside of the Greater Williamsburg area at the moment? So I'd say, I'd say most, most likely, yes. So it's just a matter of reaching out to us. Our main partners with the counseling projects are the SBDC. So the SBDC extends all through Virginia, but our main focus area is Hampton Roads. So we, we, start, we start close to home, Greater Williamsburg, Gloucester, Hampton Roads, and then beyond that as a case-by-case -case basis. Oh, that yeah. You, oh, yeah. You definitely um, answered my question and made me feel like I'm at the right place at the right time. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> definitely please reach out to us. Yes, I will. You will hear from me. Thank you. Good. Of course. Thank you for the question. That, that also indicates that that's the beauty of being online is we can get people uh, outside the community who can still benefit. So that's fantastic. Any other questions, Michelle? Yes, I'm going to unmute. I believe it's Inez. Oh. <laughs> yes, hello. How are you guys? Um, hi. Hi. So my question is understanding that this is a free service and that you're and correct me if I'm wrong, um, operating on a nonprofit basis. Um, what's your cost structure, st structure like and, and how do you finance these operations? Because I imagine there are some costs involved. Yes, yes. So a pri right now, again, totally free for the business owners. We do have the, our primary cost is that Vicki and I are big believers in paying people for good work. So we do pay our students working on these projects. And that is, that's you know, not, it's not, not a huge amount, but it's, a, it's a, to support, to support them in their efforts. And that funding comes from the CARES Act. And that is working with the SBA. There's specific, uh, specifically, we have to thank Jim Carroll for directing funds that were going towards counseling through COVID-19 to our organization to, um, to keep it going and fund some students. In addition to that, we are right now going through the process of becoming a student organization. 
an official student organization instead of an unofficial student organization. Um, and with that, we've, we're, we're kicking off some fundraising events and we're looking for ways to support the core. So things like marketing, adding, we've learned so much about, <laughs> about the needs of small business and where we need to be able to direct funds. Oh, well, let us know how can we help uh, with that as well with the fundraising. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's wonderful. We'd love to. <laughs> There's a give tab on the website. So I'm sure that they would be happy for you to go to the give tab if uh, your gift is to support this kind of effort. So definitely. Great. Anybody else, Michelle? Website. That was great. Thank you, Ines. Thanks, Ines. Yes, we have two more. Um, the next one is Frederick. You should. Frederick, go ahead. Maybe we'll come back to him. I may be doing this wrong. Let me try one more time, Frederick. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. can. Thanks. All right, wonderful. <laughs> uh, my question is uh, dealing with you all talking about social media. Everyone realizes that it is definitely the future and businesses have to be involved but there seems to be a shelf life on certain social media platforms and apps mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Snapchat that came and went. And now you have TikTok, which seems to be the new prevailing app dominating things. Do you see apps like Facebook or Instagram ever going away or something coming to replace them soon? Oh, that's such a fascinating question. I love that. Um, my, my background is in digital advertising. So that's something that I think I used to talk about a lot at work of what's new, where do we need to be, what are, where can we find the eyeballs. Um, in terms of Facebook and Instagram, they have been around for a while now. They're pretty pretty main mainstream. Um, I don't think you could go wrong with them. Uh, they have huge platforms. They can they really do reach a large number of people. I think what's most important is when you're when you're thinking about your service or your brand is figuring out where you can find that core audience. So, you know, you, you mentioned TikTok. Um, I, am, I am probably one of the oldest people on TikTok. Um, so it's probably embarrassing to admit that I'm on, on TikTok, but I am. Um, but so if, you know, if your product is legal services, TikTok's probably not where you, your ads should be um, because the demographic skews so young. Um, so that being said, I think Facebook and Instagram has that, the biggest range that you can find, so the, the widest type of audience. Mm -hmm. um, but really, just try and think about what your core business is and, and where you might find the people that would use it. That'd be my advice. Yeah. Excellent, thank you, good question. That was a really, I, maybe, but, it, but it's <laughs> worth trying now. Maybe it yeah. will go away, but it's definitely yeah. worth trying right now. <laughs> Last question, Michelle? Well, it looks like Jim Carroll would like to ask a question. I'm we knew he would mind. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Hi, guys. How are you today? Enough time with us. We have to say he was a previous speaker, so this is great. <laughs> yes, uh, a couple of things. Number one, I cannot tell you how thankful we are to have the services of Kara and Vicki and the entire Crimdell Network uh, supporting the Small Business Development Center. Uh, especially at a time like this when the demand is so great. You saw the numbers that they put together. Uh, just in what they've accomplished so far to date. Uh, my one question is, what do you think has been your biggest challenge in taking the academic learning that you have accumulated and the experiences that you have accumulated over time and then translating that down to your clients and the small business owners who may not have the benefit of understanding financial statements, understanding the nuances of marketing and things like that. How do you bridge that difference in that gap in understanding and knowledge? Well, I think, you know, we're, we have to quote you first in answering that. <laughs> <laughs> so as Jim likes to say that we are, we're working on Main Street, not Wall Street. And a lot of our students working on these projects, they are coming just with a vast big business type knowledge base where they're used to throwing out jargon left and right. And that of course it's it's not it's not appropriate with 99.5% of the population. Um, and I think the other part is that with Crimdell SBN we are very, very uh, 
aware that you know we we do not undersell the the background and the experience and the knowledge that the business owners are bringing to us so it's not about like oh the business students need to get down on their level it's about meeting each other in the middle where experience meets you know the the common language so i think it's it's about asking five times at least like is this clear i know vicky vicky you can talk about um with with her mother she's a small business oh, owner yeah yeah so a lot of what what we do is my my mother built a small business in kentucky so it's unfortunately not a williamsburg area business but um and she is so unbelievable uh, unbelievably skilled in her trade her trade and you know never took a finance class i never took a finance class until i, I came and got my mba and so i think it's that it's so I've had so much, so much fun talking to my mom about the, these things because, um, she comes like her business is so complicated and has so many assets and is focusing on so many different little, like her brain. I can't even fathom how she, <laughs> she lives in her brain. Um, and so I think what a business student can provide is, is that second perspective, right? That that's t taking the step back and saying, Hey, you know, all of these bucket of things you're doing, this is roughly finance or this is roughly marketing and kind of helping form the bigger bucket so that it, the overall picture is easier easier to see um but you know each business is so unique and so complex that it, it really is a learning experience for both parties thank you did that answer your question jim yes it did thank you very much <laughs> jim thank you so much for being on the call um there's a lot of resources available to our local business community, and I think we've highlighted just a couple of those today. We've almost, in our business, almost always had a William Mary intern, and I will tell you from experience that the students are approachable. I loved what you said, Tara, about just meeting in the middle, uh, helping each other, particularly in this crazy time. Um, there's a lot of expertise on campus, and I think um, those of us outside the brick wall sometimes don't know how to reach an, uh, the expertise on campus, and I think that's one of the beauties of what you have done is made it accessible. Um, and I think that's really important. I think for our business community, go on the website. Um, the website is great. It tells you how to get involved and immediately get um, fill out a form to get uh, contacted. What I heard today is this is effective, confidential, and free help that is coming quickly, uh, normally a two to two and a half week turnaround. So that's really important as we're trying to pivot as a business community to respond. Um, and I also like the fact that both of you in the past have been focused on sustainability and uh, you're focused on making this sustainable. So even as you move on, uh, we'd love to have you stay in the community and, and continue to be engaged as business owners. Uh, but wherever you are, it sounds like you're really working to make this a sustainable effort um, at the business school. So thank you for that. Um, we really appreciate your service and uh, to our community and, and for being with us today. So thank you both. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much for having yeah, us. And Rick, I feel like we actually do owe you a little bit of credit. It was at that December meeting, we stayed around and talked to you afterwards, and you started to put that idea in our head that there really was a need and desire in the gov local government and the community to have this type of interaction. So, thank you. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you're here and really making a difference. So, thank you so much. Our economic development staff has also been working overtime to provide support for city businesses during the crisis and leading that effort is Economic Development Director Michelle DeWitt, who's going to highlight some of the resources that are available to help your business. Uh, Michelle? Hello, everyone. Great to see you today. I am um, driving and speaking, so bear with me. <laughs> um, wanted to mention two things before I dive into resources for businesses. Um, and that is that Earth Fair is returning to Williamsburg and plans to open tomorrow. So everyone check that out. They actually visited with, it was my first um, prospect visit under COVID-19 back in early April, they came to visit. Um, so we were just getting used to wearing masks and I, would, I drove in my car and they drove in their car and we talked on the phone as I gave them a tour and checked out the competition. So we're so excited that they're returning. Um, please um, support them. And I wanted to point out one other business, which is Aromas, because Aromas um, had a fire and then had a um, had the, uh, their ceiling actually um, cave in. So all of that is taken care of and they are back open, but it's so hard when a business closes 
than for people to know they're open. So I wanted to give Aromas a shout out on Prince George Street that they're back open. So, so check them out. Now I'm going to share my screen to give you a little overview of uh, I thought I was. There we go. Um, a little overview of activity of the Economic Development Department. So this is just a snapshot of what we've been doing, trying to assist businesses and, and work with y'all since March. Um, you can see the business, virtual roundtables are, are down here. We can add um, another one to it today. Um, so thank you, Karen, Vicki. Um, so I wanted to point out some of the things that are still available um, to businesses, and that would be a CDBG grant, which we obtained, it's federal money that we obtained through the state, um, and you can use it for rent relief. So if you were open during COVID-19, you can um, submit any rent that you paid up to $5,000 and get a cash grant equal to that. If you don't have rent expenses that are large enough, you can um, gather receipts that anything related to your, your business being open during COVID-19. So PPE, certainly masks and cleaners, but maybe you had to do special marketing or something special to start curbside delivery. So um, get with us on that um, if you haven't already for the CDBG grant. There's still the 30 day grant um, that's available. It's a $3,000 grant um, and it does require that you upload a quick video of your business. If you need help doing that video, let us know. But we do wanna help our businesses get, get those funds as well. The EDAs um, of the region, including the Williamsburg EDA, provided seed money to get that started. And then a lot of citizens donated their stimulus checks. So that $1,200 that they received, they gave to this 30 day fund. So there's money there for Williamsburg area businesses. And then virtual office hours will be resuming this Thursday from one to three. So hop in um, on that and it's either confidential one-on-one -on -one, or if there's a group of people who wanna talk and brainstorm together, um, we can make that happen too um, while we're on the Zoom call. And we're just a phone call or an email or a text or a web click away. So let us know how we can be helpful. And thanks everyone for being um, I think the key word this year is we all have to be flexible and maybe there's a second word very patient <laughs> with each other as we don't know what the ne next day um, brings. But, um, but thanks to everyone. Back to you, Rick. Thank you, Michelle, and to your team of Yuri and Joanna. You all have been doing a fantastic job. Please reach out to them and see how they can help you with your business, even if it's connecting with other resources um, like William and Mary. Our next Business Roundtable webinar will take place on Tuesday, October 13th at noon, so we hope that you'll join us for that uh, and let others know. Uh, please take care of yourselves and others in our community and make it a great day to do business in Williamsburg. Thanks so much for joining us.